When the White House hosted a meeting of sheriffs from across the country last February, President Donald Trump joked about destroying the career of a Texas state senator who supported reforms to civil asset forfeiture laws, a controversial practice where police can seize cash and property of people suspected, but in most cases never convicted or charged with a crime. Do you want to give his name? We'll destroy his career. So I was on the Senate floor and we were waiting to get gaveled in and I was just kind of flipping through my Twitter and all of a sudden I was like, what? State Senator Connie Burton was one of many local lawmakers outraged by Trump's comments, which also made national headlines and angered plenty of state lawmakers far away from Texas, such as Pennsylvania State Senator Dalen Leach, who tweeted, Hey, at real Donald Trump, I oppose civil asset forfeiture too. Why don't you try to destroy my career, you fascist, loofa face shit gibbon? While Trump's comments were meant to support police, they've had the opposite of their intended impact. It's re-energized the push for reform. When you give law enforcement the ability to take your property without a conviction, that's big government. Burton is leading the campaign to reform civil asset forfeiture laws. She's a Tea Party leader from the Dallas-Fort Worth area who also happens to be pro-life and pro-borders. Burton isn't the unnamed state senator Trump offered to destroy, but she's emerged as the state's fiercest opponent of civil asset forfeiture. We are giving law enforcement the ability to take property and keep it without a criminal conviction. It's up to the person that you have taken the property from to prove that their property has not been involved in a crime. I don't know how you prove a negative. When she explains how these laws work to her constituents, she says they can hardly believe it. Like, what? You know, this is going on? Yes, it's going on. This is why we need to fix it. Last December, Burton filed legislation that would require prosecutors to obtain a criminal conviction for cops to seize property. It takes civil asset forfeiture and makes it criminal asset forfeiture. So we don't touch seizures. Police can still seize property that they think has been involved in a crime. But for them to keep it, for it to be forfeited, you have to be convicted of a crime before they can do that. Texas has tried for years to reform civil asset forfeiture laws after horror stories began to emerge about the practice. One of the most horrifying cases occurred in 2005, when cops took $10,000 from Javier Gonzalez, who was driving to the border town of Brownsville to make funeral arrangements for his aunt. The cops didn't find any drugs or contraband in his car, but they pressured Gonzalez to sign away his rights to the cash under the threat of a felony money laundering charge. And in 2012, the ACLU settled a class action lawsuit against the city of Tanaha, Texas, where cops illegally seized nearly $3 million from traffic stops involving mostly black and Latino drivers. Victims were told they could either sign their cash over to the city or go to jail. Cases like this have earned Texas a D-plus from the Institute for Justice for forfeiture laws. Data from the Libertarian Legal Organization shows that the state funnels an average of $41.6 million a year to local law enforcement agencies as a result of these seizures. Some of the money collected by Texas police departments goes to pay for items that have nothing to do with fighting crime. In Texas, they bought a margarita machine. <laughs> They were literally using this money as their own personal slush fund. Everybody is ready for this to be reformed. It's either happened to them, they know somebody that it's happened to. Once they find out about what it does, you know, they're just like, why do we have this? How can this be that, that you have to prove your property is innocent in order to get your property back? You know, it's just upside down and antithetical to what our country should stand for.